um hello friends i hope i am live now yes. uh, hello friends welcome to this video in this video as i was supposed to discuss this problem with my students the problem is given a matrix a of order 2 having the element 2 1 1 2 mm. i need to first find out the characteristic polynomial that part has been actually an easy part so i have just directly wrote the solution of it that means the characteristic polynomial is nothing but lambda square minus stress of a times lambda plus determinant of a stress is nothing but sum of eigen value determinant is nothing but 4 minus 1 that is 3 what we have to do the most important and the interesting part of this question is to find out a raised to 100 by using the kle hamilton theorem what is the kle hamilton theorem the kle hamilton theorem tells us that or it, does, it states as every square matrix satisfy its characteristic polynomial since we here a is a square matrix with the characteristic polynomial lambda square minus 4 lambda plus 3 this polynomial will be satisfied by the a that means on the place of lambda if i write a i will get a square minus 4a plus 3i equal to 0 since it satisfied now what we have to do is we have to find out a raised to 100 to find this we have to use kle hamilton theorem and that is nothing but the restriction right so the first thing whenever some power of a has been asked and you have to use kle hamilton theorem we are going to use a division algorithm right that means we are going to divide the required matrix with the characteristic polynomial that we have that means how i will start i will start with dividing the required answer that is nothing but a raised to 100 by what i will multiply i will divide it by what i will divide it by a square minus 4a plus 3i so this is nothing but the standard pattern that we should follow whenever we want to get any particular matrix by using kle hamilton theorem we just divide that matrix by the characteristic polynomial what is an advantage of this we know that whatever number we are dividing it is actually zero right so the answer is same as a remainder but let us just start this division and try to find out the answer we here i have a raised to 2 i want a raised to 100 i multiplied with a raised to 98 so what i get is it is nothing but a raised to 100 minus 4 times a raised to 99 plus 3 times a raised to 98 okay after division i will subtract right so sign changes it is minus this is plus this is minus so the remainder at present is nothing but a raised to 99 into 4 Minus three a raised to ninety eight. Correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write all the remainders that I get. So the first remainder that I found is nothing but four a raised to ninety nine minus three a raised to ninety eight. Further, I can divide it. Yes, I can divide it. I have a square. I want four a raised to ninety nine. So what I do, I just Add over here four a raised to ninety seven. So over here I get four a raised to ninety nine. Then four three or oh, four four is a sixteen. So it is minus sixteen a raised to ninety eight, and it is twelve a raised to ninety seven. If I subtract, sign changes. Minus plus minus. This is cancelled. We here I get thirteen a raised to ninety eight minus twelve a raised to ninety seven. Okay, let's go further. What I, what is the remainder that I got at the second time? That is nothing but thirteen a raised to ninety eight minus twelve a raised to ninety seven. Right. Let's go further. Now I want thirteen. Right. So what I multiply over here, I multiply it with plus thirty. A raised to what? What already I have a square. I want to reach the a raised to ninety eight. So it is ninety six. So it is nothing but thirteen a raised to ninety eight minus thirteen into four. That is nothing but four threes are twelve. One carry. This is nothing but fifty 
two a raised to ninety seven, and at the end it is nothing but three into thirteen, right? So it is thirty nine a raised to ninety six. So if I subtract whatever I get, I write. I just write it over here. So it is minus minus plus minus. So what I get is I get forty a raised to ninety seven minus thirty nine a raised to ninety six. Let me just write the remainder over here. It is nothing but forty a raised to ninety seven minus thirty nine a raised to ninety six. Now what will happen? This thing will keep on going for a long amount of time. We just try to understand what is the pattern of this remainders that we are getting, right? First observation that we can make is whatever number is over here, the next number is one less than that, and over here I have the sign in negative. So if it is four, it is three, it is thirteen, it is minus twelve, it is forty, it is minus thirty nine. So that pattern is fine. So I just need to find out the first number itself. The second number is nothing but one minus and that. Now from this three, I reach till what? I reach till thirteen. From three till thirteen, it is actually plus nine. From thirteen to forty, it is plus twenty seven, and similarly something else will also happen. But what is my first remainder actually? My first remainder was this. When I don't divide by anything, I just get a raised to hundred. Right? So I'll get a raised to hundred over here. I have one. So from one, I reach till four. That is nothing but plus three. So now I think the pattern is clear. It is three raised to one, three raised to two, three raised to three. Every time I am adding a power of three. Three square. Then I added. Then I added three raised to four. Right. So what I am observing is, whatever is the power of hundred, correspondingly I am getting the coefficient of it. For an example, a raised to hundred has the coefficient one. Right. What is this one? One is nothing but three raised to zero. Now a raised to ninety nine. When I had the remainder, that has a coefficient as four. What is this four? Four is nothing but this three raised to zero plus three raised to one. Correct. And if I have a raised to ninety eight, then the coefficient is thirteen, and this thirteen is actually nothing but three raised to zero plus three raised to one. Plus three raised to three. Correct. Over here it is three. It is three raised to three. So similarly, this pattern could be taken further, right? What we can do is, if I just consider this pattern, what will be the coefficient of a raised to one? Why I am interested in that? Because I know if I divide my a raised to hundred. By this polynomial, the remainder will be of the degree one. Correct. So I just want the degree to be equal to one. So I am interested in the remainder when it I get a raised to one. What is the observation? If it is a raised to hundred, I have three raised to zero. If it is a raised to ninety nine, that is hundred minus one, I reach to go till three raised to one. If it is a raised to ninety eight, I need to go till a three raised to two. Right, I need to go to t raised to two. So the power, how much it is less than hundred, I need to go to that. So the number over here is actually what it is nothing but three raised to zero plus three raised to one plus three raised to two, and so on. It will go till what? It will go till three raised to ninety nine. Why ninety nine? Because one is ninety nine less than hundred. Correct. So the coefficient of a will be this. Now what is this? This is nothing but a GP. This is nothing but the GP, where my a is nothing but three raised to zero. First term is one, and r is nothing but every next term is obtained by multiplying with three, right? So my GP with a equal to one and r equal to three. Then what is my s hundred? What is my s hundred? Right? Because I need to add how many terms? I need to add hundred terms. So it is nothing but a. This is nothing but what? This is nothing but r raised to n minus one divided by r minus one, right? So this is same as what? This is same as one times three raised to hundred minus one divided by 
3 minus 1 and that is nothing but 2. That is 1 by 2, 3 raised to 100 minus 1. Right. So, what I observe is inside the remainder, the coefficient of A is nothing but this. So, in this pattern, in this pattern of the remainder, the last remainder that I am going to get is nothing but A raised to 1 times what I obtain is half 3 raised to 100 minus 1. And the next thing that I see is, okay, what I observe over, over here if I have 4, the next number is 3. Correct. So, here if I have this number, the next number is nothing but 1 minus of it. That is nothing but half. 3 raised to 100 minus 1 and this thing minus 1 times what if it is a raised to 98 the next term is 99 the next term is a raised to 98 so if it is a raised to 1 the next term is a raised to 0 so that is nothing but a raised to 0 so ultimately what we find is we find that this this term is actually nothing but my final remainder Right. So, this is my final remainder. I will get some quotient. I will get some remainder. What I found is, I just found the remainder. So, my A raised to 100. This is my A raised to 100. I divided by, I divided that by my characteristic polynomial of A. Right. I will get some quotient. And I will get a remainder, which we just now obtained. What is that remainder? Right. So, this is actually my remainder. I just copy pasted it. Let me just keep it in the correct place. Right. Looks better. So, now comes the final step. After doing so much of calculation, what we know is my this number is actually same as the divisor that is characteristic polynomial of A in terms of A times the quotient, whatever the quotient might be. Plus the remainder, the remainder is nothing but 1 by 2, 1 by 2, 3 raised to 100 minus 1 times A minus the same number minus 1. So, it is half 3 raised to 100 minus 1 minus 1, A raised to 0 is nothing but I. What we know is by Kale Hamilton theorem, this is 0. So, this is a place where we are using the Cayley Hamilton theorem. Ultimately, what I found, if that thing is 0, ultimately I found that my A raised to 100 is actually same as half 3 raised to 100 minus 1 times A minus, uh, we can simplify this. If I, sub, if I distribute this half inside, what I get is 3 raised to 100 by 2 minus half minus 1, it is nothing but minus 3 by 2 times it. Correct? So, this is nothing but the final answer. What is the next thing that could be done? You can write the value of A. You can distribute that number inside. But I think this is more than enough. This is the way we can use Cayley-Hamilton theorem to find out any polynomial that is asked. Right? The only thing we should know the statement of Cayley-Hamilton theorem and the next thing is we need to use the division algorithm. Right? We need to divide that given or the required polynomial by the characteristic polynomial, right? So, I think this is uh, enough for the solution. If you still have any doubt, difficulty, you can ask in the chat box, okay? Bye-bye.